Welcome to episode two. Meet Mr. Gersey. We're about to learn about wine. And right now, we're going to buy that pass. So follow me, and we're going to get tipsy today, all right? Not so popular in the Philippines. Aside from the Sacramento wine, you don't really taste uh, wine in the Philippines. Ah, gotcha. There's a title for you, for your job. You know, you have yes. doctors, you have lawyers. And I'm ESL, in English Second Language. I don't want to pronounce it the wrong way, but it's Somalia. No, it's sommelier. Sommelier. Sommelier, exactly. What is that? French? Sommelier, it's a French word. It's first uh, point, I think it was like mid 1300, but during the time of Louis XIV as a, as a baggage carrier for the royalty. So basically, the sommelier before they go to war, carrying the baggage for the, uh, for the royalty. Uh, that was not till like probably British, British maybe just the one, they were the one who started using sommelier as a butler or a, a serving wine, basically. Gotcha, that's bad and my name is French and I can pronounce that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. So what is the difference between white wine and red wine besides the color? Besides the color, oh, uh, well, the grapes where it's made from. Uh, white wine is uh, made from uh, white grapes or usually you say like green grapes. Like. Right. And, uh, or it can, be, it can be a little bit roasted in color, you know, the, uh, the, the berries. Then red grapes, most of the time, made from a red version of the black grapes, but you can make a white wine from a red grapes. So the difference only is the way you extract the color. It's basically just like the red wine. You you leave the skin contact with the juice, and that's how you create red wine because uh, the, you get the color from the skin. The white wine there's no color in the skin, so you don't get uh, the color. Okay. Now I was watching an interview. And it was Jay-Z, if I'm not mistaken. He was saying, when you're drinking wine, you have to watch how you hold the cup because the temperature from your hand changes Yes, the taste of the wine. The taste of the wine, exactly. Your, your hand is warmer, but there's only a few reasons why you don't want to hold it on this reason. Why, yes, why you don't want to hold it on, on the body of the glass and you want to make sure you hold it on the stem is, and I'll show you why. Basically, when you're eating or dining, you're eating, you have some like grease in your hand. If you hold your wine like this, by the end of the night, you will see your your glass so much smashes. So the proper way to really drink wine, not really the proper way, this ideal oh, way. Exactly. Let's hold it in the in the stem. Okay, and I've seen people hold it like this. It's no, it's just you have more control on this stem. Yeah, I've seen, I've yeah. seen that before. So hold it from the stem. Hold it, hold it from the stem. Try to drink also from one spot only of the, the rim. Can you drink it? Oh, okay. One spot only. Why one spot? Because, uh, like I said, you're eating, right? You have grease in your lips and your mouth, and you don't want your glass to look like the. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you might have track. You don't see the color over here, right? I don't see my, my, marks. my lips right there. Yeah. Exactly. If you drink the whole rim, by the end of the evening, you have all the marks on the, on the rim. You look like a bunch of emotion kisses. Exactly. Another thing that I heard of is red red wine makes you hungrier. Well, yes, you know, it's it just because of the tannin. The tannin, some wine demands food. If you have some uh, alianic or papaya and a uh, this wine tends to have a very high tannin, or even some uh, Lombardo or Cabernet from an Napa Valley. The tannin somehow binds well with the food. You cannot, don't want to drink the wine with high tannin, just wine alone. You want it with some protein, because the protein and the tannin, it, tannin is a compound. So it does give you bunch of yeah. smoking and uh, you want to eat. Well, not yes, same. yeah, not the same thing. Like, you know, there's some red wine that you can drink without food. Like, some of the Jalela, lighter, Pinot Noir, this one, yeah. you can drink it without food. Uh, 
invited someone to hire the time it is, you want to decon it and you want to drink it with that. So what, how do you know what's good wine and what's bad wine? The, the good one is the wine that you enjoy. Okay. That's the best way. So it's not a price it. thing? No, no, the price doesn't tell you. Uh, well, of course, the price will tell you the rarity of wine, how rare the wine is. Like, it's like buying a car. You know, some cars are more expensive than yeah, others. Right. Yeah. Both of them will take your destination, but mm -hmm. Kia will be different from Porsche. Uh, you know, if you have money, will you buy a Kia, you will get a Porsche. If you have money, you know, you, you will get something better because it's better. Yeah, wait, I'm saying that uh, Kia is bad. I'm saying it's just, uh, will serve you the same way, like an alcohol in it or in a wine. What is this you drink right now? So the first one we drink is, this is the wine. So this is La Moselle Sancerre. It's from Sancerre from the Wild Valley. Sancerre is, a region, an affiliation in, in Loire Valley. It's not a grape, so it's usually made 100% uh, Sauvignon Blanc, but you can find a sensor Rouge, which is a red sensor which made a Pinot Noir as well. The Alphonse Mello actually they made a uh, sensor from a uh, Pinot Noir. Gotcha. So you can have a red sensor as well. And the second one right here is the Mayo Camoset from uh, Folle Bosch, the Mayo Camoset 2013 uh, Grand Cru. And that one is red. This is a red, made from Pinot Noir. So uh, there are about 33 Grand Cru's in Burgundy. Those are the top notch uh, uh, wine right. region uh, affiliation. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 it does. Yeah, yeah this is, is uh, it, it is a very very precious uh, uh, bottle. Oh, actually, it cost you about maybe 300 bucks. Hundred dollars for that. Yeah. What's the most expensive uh, wine bottle have you seen? That I have seen and tasted, uh, probably the uh, the Monte Conti. Uh, and it, it will cost, I think, sold it like around 4000 for a while with that. Yeah. Yeah. You, have, so, you really have to be a wine lover to spend four Yeah, exactly. It, it's the same thing. And it's very rare. You don't produce that much. Uh, so that, that drive up the, uh, the value of the, the wine, the price of the wine. Since you said it's very rare, right? How long does it take to create uh, the wine? I know you go to... Uh, how it, it varies. Uh, depends on the region. Depends on the grapes. Some uh, the regular wine that you find a uh, uh, regular store, uh, like maybe fifteen dollars a bottle, roughly like that. Take a week, roughly to create them. <laughs> yeah, a harvest and uh, yeah, ferment it and that's it. Yeah. So it just leading to leading to the next question I have for you. So does that mean the longer the the wines take to be made, it's more expensive? Yes, because the more you store your wine in your cellar before you release them in your barrel, so you can age it in the barrel first before you release them, that's already giving some of the money. So that's what makes it exactly. Expensive bottle, yeah. You get a wine fridge, yeah. You, you need a really uh, wine cellar, but if you can get like regular wine, that you, right now, to be honest, if you go to a store, you buy a wine, your tendency is you will drink it within 24 hours. So, yeah, if you're having a wine, yes, you want to put it in the fridge, you want to sell a little bit chill. Uh, but if you're getting a light red like this one, you want to serve a little bit chill as well. If uh, you want, you're having a Cabernet from a Napa, you want to really room temperature 60 degrees roughly. Uh, what got you into wine? I don't know. It's just uh, it's a very tough question. I just love wine. I've been, I really been uh, interested in wine for uh, 15 years, uh, and uh, so since I was uh, 
It's a major one. It tasted this one in the Philippines. Very rare, but this is like a sangria in a bottle, actually, called like a Maria Clara uh, back in the Philippines. It was really sweet. But uh, that got me into so wine. So sweetness got you. Yeah, yeah, the sweetness got yeah, me as well. That's, that's my thing also. Yeah. Anything that I'm drinking, whether it's wine or hard liquor, it has to be sweet. I don't like tasting the liquor. To me, it's well, nasty. your palate will change though. You start with something sweet and then it will change and change exactly. as you get into the wine, more into the yeah, wine. Sure. Yeah, the exactly. Wine. You get be into you'll be introducing different wine. What's, uh, what's your favorite wine? I don't have a favorite wine. And my wine is something that it varies on the weather, what I'm eating, who I'm with. Uh, that's my that's you know, the wine. Mood. Yeah, and depending on the mood. If but someone asks me like if if you're going to die today, or when I spoke to this guy in the, uh, in the bar, he said like, but if you're going to die today, what will be the wine? That you take with you. Exactly. Hey, Jesus, I'll you say, drink it today. Yeah, I'll just drink champagne, and you know, that's the best <laughs> thing to do. Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, champagne is, uh, you're gonna have fun. Exactly, it's the most beautiful uh, uh, wine ever created, I believe. All right. I know um, you most likely travel because of your film. Yeah. What are some places that you like visiting? I haven't really been traveling a lot lately. Uh, yeah, I know you're not traveling the whole world. Yeah. yeah. Just oh. I, I've been to Sonoma, I've been into Napa, but I try to visit a lot of New York places because uh, it's, New York's a beautiful place for wine. It's, uh, it's coming right now, well, compared to Napa, it's actually cheaper in uh, New York. There are more uh, Napa producers actually moving to investing a lot in Finger Lakes area. Because in, in New York you have uh, two main, uh, uh, three main regions for wine and two climate. So you have the continental climate from uh, northern part Finger Lakes, Hudson Valley, and you have the maritime climate from uh, uh, here in, in Long Island. So it means you have the climate like northern Long Island, and you have the continental same thing as Burgundy. So it's uh, you have the diversity of uh, wine. It, it's really sounded like you just told me a bunch of cold. Yeah, it's it's uh yeah. You really gotta love this and really study it. It's and study, exactly. It. So it, I see why you've been doing it for so long. You really have to dedicate yourself in, in, in wine. Yeah, that's like everything in life. You, yeah, you, know, you like doing and you want to accomplish. That. There, there is. It. There is a term in, in Japanese called ikigai, it's like finding balance. How you say it? Ikigai. Ikigai. Yeah, it's a finding balance for everything. Ikigai. Like doing things that you love, that you somehow help others as well. I think it is like my passion. This is that mm -hmm. I get up in the morning and think about wine. I go to bed and think about wine. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah. Wine is life. Wine is, wine is well, I, I love that. That's your passion and you enjoy doing it. Yeah, yeah. going to work doesn't feel Sit. like work at all. Oh, that's the best That's the best feeling when you go to work. It doesn't feel like work. I mean, you love what you're doing, definitely. Have you won any contests? No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't really joined any contests. Oh, so you have to join. No. I, I don't. Oh, you get selected. You... No, you have to join and oh. select it as well. But I, I'm taking a lot of exams, uh, courses in, in wine. I don't think I will get into contests because I mean, I don't feel like the contest is something I really want to do. I do want to teach wine and educate people on wine. Not, and in, it, not in it for the ring. Yeah, I, I want to basically invest time in future in the Philippines and start the introducing wine in the Philippines. Just to make it part of our culture. Okay, you know, it's your passion. Yeah, yeah. And I like I like the way you answer it. Like um, I'm not really into the competition. I just want to teach others about it as as much as I'm yes. enjoying it. So yes, I, I think wine is uh, it's a uh, it's a beautiful thing. I just like how you break it everything down. Like yes, it's a. Uh, Wine can actually survive depends on what wine you're having, but it can last for a hundred years. How long? What's the longest you can wine can last? Uh, well, the longest same wine we have. There's no there, time there. There's the fortified wine, which is fortified wine. It's uh, more like dessert wine, rocky port, Madeira. Fortified is for, made from fortification. Fortification is a process of uh, stopping the fermentation of the wine by adding a, a, a alcohol like a, a, a neutral alcohol, gotcha. uh, made, usually made from grapes. So by doing that, when you add a neutral alcohol, like around like 90 to 90% alcohol, then it will fermentation, it will kill all the yeast. Mm -hmm. And uh, fermentation is why fortified porter is usually sweet because of that. So let me ask you this. I don't know if I'm eating steak, I go with a red wine. 
right? Yeah. All of this. Go with red wine. If you're eating steak, really, yeah, go with the red wine. I can't think of any white wine that can... Uh, so what if, what if I'm eating chicken? You can have it white, you can have it red. The idea with the, 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 this uh, whole thing about white meat goes with the white wine, red meat goes with the red wine. It's, it's really uh, too, uh, it's just... Uh, gotcha. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, you answered everything I really want to know. Yeah. So now when I go to the supermarket, you know, if I see a, a bottle of wine that's $15, I know they make that wine. Yeah, no, it can be, but the, the, the price of wine, it tells you only, it, it varies on the region. If you're going to get $15 from an about then $15 from, from Portugal. Which is like they're really different. Uh, for the dollar, fifteen dollars from Portugal it means that you know in, in an old world. So you have to the old world, which is like the European countries, and you have the new world, which is like uh, the South America, America, and then the United, United States. Then you have the South Africa, and you have you know, Chile, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Those are the new world. Virgil, this was very educational. Is there anything you want to tell my people, my followers, people that's watching this? Where to catch you? Oh, I work in the Lance Club, so I work there. I yeah, spend I work, most of my time. I, I work there too. Yeah, that's how, that's how we met. Exactly. So thank you, my brother. So, I welcome. appreciate you. You're welcome. So folks, there you have it. Your wine class for today with me, Mr. Garcy and Virgil. Now I'm gonna go get tipsy. Hope you don't mind. Enjoy your wine. Cheers. <laughs>